Hey there, in the following tutorial, we're going to take a look at HTML5 animation with graphic symbols and nested timelines and then also sprite sheets in Animate CC. Let's begin by creating a new document and go over to the templates and choose HTML5 canvas. And we're looking for this sample animation of this Bilbo character. Really great animation. If you scrub your timeline, you'll notice that you get this fully walking character. Now you can also double click or, or first select and notice that you've got actually graphic symbols for all of these different parts. If you double click, you'll go inside of the timeline and you'll see its own nested timeline. So this graphic symbol actually is really, really rich with lots of animation. In fact, it even has a tail that has its own graphic symbol independent timeline. Now, if I go back to scene one, so you can double click outside of it a couple times, so you're back on the main la layer, I do want to point out one thing that happens when you scrub the timeline. We're not able to see the shadow move. And the reason why is because they chose to use a movie clip instead of a graphic symbol. And what's really important here is that we change this into a graphic symbol so that we prop properly get to see that moving with the Bilbo body. Now, another thing, if we look in our library over on the right, and maybe yours are grouped up together, you might notice that the shadow is here and it looks different than the other ones. That's because that is still a graph, um, a movie clip symbol in the timeline. And so I'm going to write, or in my library, I'm going to right click on it, go to the properties and change this into a graphic symbol. Beautiful. Now, the next thing is these are all parts of one particular object, one particular thing, the Bilbo animation. So one of the things that I would always like you to do is go ahead and create a folder and call it what it is, Bilbo parts, basically. And now I'm going to take all of those different graphic symbols, the folder, and I'm going to drag them into that folder so that I get that nicely organized. Now, if we make any other symbols, we'll be able to see those in our library when we create them. And that's what we're about to do. Now, let's go and select all of our different objects here on our main timeline. We can move things a just around a little bit, just get it centered just a little bit better. Um, that won't really matter because we're going to move it around in just a second. But one of the things that I want to notice is, once again, everything is animating, which is great. Let's select everything, right click, and I'm going to convert this to a new symbol. And this is going to be called the Bilbo Anim. And I want it to be a graphic symbol type, not a movie clip, a graphic symbol. Let's click OK. And you'll notice that all of my layers, which were poorly named, um, got they got emptied. So let's go ahead and get rid of all of the layers there that we don't need. And this one called Bilbo Foot, if I double click on it, maybe we'll just call it the Bilbo. We, Bilbo Foot doesn't make sense because it's not just a foot anymore. It's the entire object. So anyway, if we scrub our timeline, you'll notice that nothing's happening. And the reason why is because we have a graphic symbol timeline. And graphic symbols are dependent upon the timeline that they're on and all nested timelines. So we need to double click and go inside of the timeline for this particular graphic symbol. And you'll notice it just made, when we converted it to a symbol, it only gave us one keyframe. So what we need to do is make sure that our timeline is also 35 five frames long, just like all of the other timelines. So you go out to frame 35 and you can either press F5 or right click and choose insert frame. Not insert keyframe, but insert frame. And what this does is this makes sure that we have a timeline which is now 35 frames long, just like it was on the main timeline originally. And let's go back to the main timeline and you'll see if we scrub, everything looks great. All right, the next thing that I want to look at here is um, saving our document and then generating a sprite sheet. So let's save this document save as. I'm going to go into my temp folder, make a new folder for this because it's going to generate a couple extra files. So I really need that folder. And so this is going to be the Bilbo animation folder. Double click on it, go inside, and I'll call this Bilbo animation. And I'll even put my name on it. And you probably should as well, so you know it's yours. Hit save. 
All right, now we know where that location is. If I go to that folder, I can now find that folder and it has just the flash file in it, which is great, our FLA file. Um, now, we're ready to generate our sprite sheet. If we want to go and look at our character, just look at how the character changes shape. This is actually gonna be really important in just a minute. If I right click on this and go down to the bottom, we've got a couple different options. One of them is actually to output a sequence. And this is kind of interesting. You might try it, just see what happens. Let's make sure we go to the same folder. And uh, I'm actually going to create a folder for the PNG sequence. can't remember if this makes a folder or not, but I'll make a folder for that sequence. Double click on it there and hit save. And you'll see that it's going to generate a PNG sequence for me. I'll just say export, and just see what happens. Yep, it didn't make a folder. So take a look. It actually generated all of these different graphics as a sequence. That is pretty darn cool because now I have a sequence of all of the different graphic symbols. Now, the problem with sequences is that these are all lots of individual files. And sometimes that's difficult to work with with HTML5. So what HTML5 likes is what's called a sprite sheet. So we're going to go back to the sprite sheet option instead. So back in Animate CC, right click and go to generate sprite sheet. And you'll see that we have all of these different sprite sheet items here. Let's change our item dimensions to, uh, let's see, um, it actually makes it bigger. So I'll make it to auto size. I think that's what it does automatically, typically. Yep, there you go. You'll see it's actually quite big what's happening here. Um, and uh, notice that I have no border padding, no shape padding. And when I go ahead and export this, it should go into the same folder. And let's go take a look at that file. Where did I save it? Let me do that again. Generate sprite sheet. Let's make that I'm um, make sure that I'm putting it in the same folder. Hit save. Yeah, there we go. Export. And it should now give me that. There it is. It should now give me that sprite sheet. Now take a look at the sprite sheet right here, and you'll notice that we have all the different characters. The problem with this character, and this is a pretty high res file, is that they're not really aligned very well. And the reason is, you know, we wonder like what's going on that it would do this. In fact, here it's really made a mistake for some reason. Well, one of the things is that I have no sh padding and nothing else between them. And also a trick about doing um, sprite sheet output is to go inside of the original and to create um, on the timeline where you have the character, we need to create a box which is larger than the entire object so that we generate our spacing and padding in that itself. So I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to create a rectangle that goes a little bit bigger than my entire animation. And what I want to do is then go to that rectangle, change the properties so the fill is to set to zero. And sometimes I have a difficult time getting to it. There we go. Should be set to zero. And as soon as you click off of it, you'll notice that it should go back to your background and we don't see it anymore. Whoops, I had four. So let me get that all the way down to zero. If yours is troublesome, it's just because of, ah, it really hates me when I have this software um, that I'm using right now. is really annoying. All right, so I'll go back to it. Anyway, you should be able to get it down to zero. I'm going to take that and put it below. And you'll see now this animation is completely encompassed by that particular um, rectangle, which is really, really important. Oops, look at that. I didn't get it there. And that's because it's a little bit taller. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the uh, free transform. So that's the Q key. And I'm going to hold down the Alt key just so I control the top. And I'm going to make sure that that goes higher than that animation goes out. And here it goes out to the side. So I'm going to make it get a little bit larger than that. 
I want to make sure that this rectangle is larger than that animation at all times. So hopefully that worked. Yay. Now let's come back to scene one. And now when we go to generate our sprite sheet. Oh, I guess I did it automatically. Yeah, here we go. Now I'm going to call this the sprite sheet, which is what it is. I'll choose export. And what's great is now when I go and look at that sprite sheet, you'll see all of them are aligned properly. Now I'm still getting some funky output. For some reason, it's not calculating things properly, and it just could be a memory glitch or something like that. But now at least what you should get is much better alignment of all of your different sprites. So that invisible square is actually, or rectangle, is a really nice skill to be able to use. Now I've got my sprites done, so I'm going to go ahead and right click on my layer and change it to a guide so I don't see it anymore. Um, it'll still be there, but it's not going to output when I do the next thing. Now what I'm ready to do is actually start animating with this character. And the first thing that I want to do is just make the size of my actual comp a little bit bigger. So I'm going to change this to 960 by 540. You can keep it at 24 frames a second. And then all I'm going to do is just simply do a little animation where this guy walks. And he's going to walk from the bottom from the top to the bottom and he's going to get bigger and we're going to do this over 120 frames so you can create the keyframes um, just by going to maybe let's go out to frame 20 and let's do um, it basically happens every second so i'm going to move them at frame 24 i need to create a new keyframe so i need a new keyframe here let's go to f6 and move them over i should have remembered to do that so i need to move them back at frame one. So at frame 24 or thereabouts, he's going to jump over here. Now at that point, he's going to flip around and go the opposite direction. So I'm going to do a keyframe on the next frame, which is F6. And then I'm going to go out to about frame 50, insert a keyframe. Oops, let's actually flip him around before I insert that keyframe. So I'll flip him around then go out to frame 50, make a new keyframe by clicking and dragging. I'm going to move them over here to this side. Then I'm going to make another keyframe right next to it with alt drag, flip them around again. And then drag them over to the other side. So that's about frame 75. And he's going to get a little bit bigger. I could hold down the shift key to make sure that he's constrained properly. Then at frame 76 or thereabouts, he's going to flip around again. And we'll finish at 120 just by him going up here and he'll scale up at the same time. So he's really kind of coming towards the camera at that particular time. So once you've done this animation, go ahead and select all the different areas, right click and choose create classic tween. And here's what we should get. Oh, should have created it in between, but let me click and drag, right click, choose create classic tween. There we go. Now it worked. So here's what we got. He walks down here, then he flips around and he walks the other direction. He flips around and walks the other direction. And I basically just have him animating across my entire timeline. This particular one, I can see he's a little stretched. So I'm going to get that a little bit better. There we go. And of course, if you want to do something with him, like make him larger, you definitely can. You just have to make sure that your keyframes are duplicated. So I'm going to flip them around at this point. And then create that classic tween again. And you'll see we basically just have this simple animation of him walking back and forth. When you're done with that animation, go ahead and save your file and you're done with it. Thanks.